We're all used to drooling over Halo models with Gucci price tags, but arguably it's at the entry level where design is truly cutting edge. The constraints of tighter budgets making every single component choice that much more critical to ride quality. So in this video, we're taking a look at three full suspension bikes that don't cost the earth. So Al, let's be honest, we spend a lot of time riding around on top end bikes, but it's these budget bouncers that are really exciting to test, aren't they? Yeah, totally. I mean, I'd say this is my favorite test of the year because like everything's at stake here. Um, it's really hard to put together a, a competitive bike at like just over a thousand pounds or just over. So the price range in this test is 1000 pounds for the Voodoo and it goes to Vitas at 1250. And then the Boss Nut sits in the middle at 1100. Um, and to get a bike that can, a full suspension bike that can do everything at that, for that money is just, it's incredible. Okay, so, so what are the tactics that, um, that these brands use to produce a really good suspension bike at this price? I mean, it's like any bike, geometry comes first. You see the bikes evolve over the years and like there's no reason why a 1100 pound bike shouldn't have the same geometry as a 5000 pound bike. I mean, it costs nothing to do other than someone to sit down and get the numbers right and the drawing that goes to the factory for the frames to be made. There are a couple of other things that I think are really critical too, and that's wheel size. Like there's a big trend for, well, it's not even a trend anymore, like 29 inch wheels dominate in downhill, in enduro, trail riding, I mean, across country, they're everywhere. And once you get to a certain price point, that makes sense. But at this price point, it's just too, it's, it's really hard to make a 29er entry level bike that doesn't, that isn't too heavy, basically. In fact, the Vitas uh, Mythic, we tested the top end version, which is 15.99, and that was a 29er. And this bike at 1250 is actually lighter than the top end 29er. So it's, it's, it's a really, really critical thing. And what goes with the wheels, fork length, bigger wheels need longer forks, longer forks are more flexible. And as you can see, like there's a, we've got in the trail bike of the year test, lots of the bikes now come with 35 and 36 mil stanchions to go with a 29 inch wheel. You're not gonna get forks like that for 1100 pounds. So you're down to 32 mil stanchions. And so basically the fork gets scaled down to match the wheel size. So you get better steering, better suspension, and also you get the weight savings. So you're getting basically a, a stronger bike, a lighter bike, and a stiffer bike if, you, if you're running these 27.5 exactly. wheels at this price. Exactly. So what are, the, what are the three bikes we've got in the test? At 1,000 pounds, we have the Voodoo Kanza. And that's sold by Halfords, isn't it? Yep, you can walk into Halfords, get one of those. That's exclusive to Halfords. Next in line, it's 1,100 pounds for the Caliber Boss Nut. So that's up 100 pounds from last year, but the bike's changed completely, which we'll get into in a minute. Again, you could walk into a go outdoors and probably not get one of these because they sell like hotcakes. <laughs> and the final bike is the Vitas Mythique 27 VR. That bike is 1,250 pounds. And obviously that's one comes in a box delivered to your door. Yeah. And that bike is also available with 29 inch wheels as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the range is mirrored in both wheel sizes and prices stay the same as well. Okay. So you're not penalized if you want to go for bigger wheels in terms of like in your pocket, but the bikes do get heavier. Well, let's start by uh, talking about the, the Voodoo. Yeah, totally. So anyone who's watched or read our hard, hard tail of the year test will be familiar with the Voodoo Bazango and that's won numerous tests over the years. So did that pedigree translate over to the Kanzo? In short, no. Okay, <laughs> so why was that? <laughs> um, before we get into why, let's, I'll give you a little rundown on like what this bike is. 130 mil travel in the rear and then they've got a RockShox Recon up front with 140. So this actually got like, it's got the same travel in the rear as the other two bikes in test, but it's got 10 mil more up front. So in theory, what you'd be expecting with the, the longer fork would be slacker geometry and maybe a bit more capable, but the frame geometry compromises that. And that's the real reason why the bike got rated a six. Um, it comes in three sizes, uh, 16 to 20. And this is actually the 20 inch. So this is the biggest one they make. And when they mean 20 inch, they mean like bottom bracket to- Yeah, so pretty old school, way old of school measuring. sizing. And basically, so you get a tall bike, 
but it's not very long. It's definitely not low, so you, you, you definitely feel when you're riding, it feels very boxy and you're very square and you're sat on top of it. So it doesn't really, the geometry doesn't inspire confidence. It's got a really good fork. I mean, it's the exact same fork that you get on the caliber. And so there's no compromise there. But just your riding position feels really, really dated. And another thing about this, their frame design is that they have this big kink in the, in the seat tube that really limits how much you can put the seat post into the frame. So I think I almost had to chop off like half the seat post just to drop it that low. Yeah. So when I pull it up to, for my pedaling position, I've got about like this much seat post in the frame. So yeah. it's really a compromise. So it's crying out for a dropper post. But will, would that fix the bike or? No. Okay. You wouldn't, you, <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be an investment, let's say. Um, Cause there's a couple of other things that are wrong with it too. It comes with um, WV tires, which are good tires, trail boss, but really like on the front, it needs something with a bit more meat. It's, it's, a, it's a decent rear tire, but it's not what you want up front. So when we switched to our Maxxis control tires, we definitely, we gave this bike a big leg up in the test. It's a bit flexy. It's still running the, the dated like 135 quick release rear end and maybe on a different suspension design that wasn't a four bar linkage where you've got the pivot right by the dropout. It wouldn't be such an issue, but in this bike, you notice the rear end flex and also the Clark's brakes are dreadful. Right. I mean, I, they're, luckily they've got, they've got two finger brake levers and I think I had three, three fingers on them like <laughs> most of the time I was yeah. riding this bike. I thought maybe it was, gonna just be like a bed-in thing. It would take some time, but like after multiple rides, there's, there was still no stopping power with them. So you'd basically have to start thinking about braking way earlier than you right. should do. So some, some fundamental problems that, yeah. I mean, the frame stiffness, you can't really do anything with, can you? But, no. Uh, and the geometry, what about the suspension? How did that feel? Um, obviously I said the fork's really good. Yeah. Um, it's got a RockShox rear shock. It's a good shock. It's got a lockout on there. It probably doesn't need it because the bike actually pedals quite well. Um, and it's a little bit, clangy on the rear there's a lot of noise there's no chain stay protection the chain slaps around a lot so you get a lot of feedback from the bike and it's interesting because it climbed quite well given the riding position and the high bb height but when you're going through rolling terrain it felt wallowy and soft and then you go through something fast and hard and you just get the feedback through the suspension so it just needs a lot of love so if it sounds like this is a kind of bike that's being created on a spreadsheet rather than someone's been out there actually riding and yeah testing. And, it's, and it's dated too yeah it's an old frame design. It just needs bringing up. Like, I mean, the, the, the parts, I think they, like, okay, forgetting the brakes, the rest of the parts on it are really good. I mean, it's got a SRAM NX drivetrain, the bar's a good shape, the stem length is decent, the saddle's okay, the fork's great. I mean, all you gotta do is upgrade the front tire and keep the other, keep the other one as a spare. So like, and it's got rock shock shock. There's no reason why that shock can't be tuned perfectly to this suspension yeah. if someone takes the time to do it. But really what it needs to be, it needs to be chopped down so it's lower. The bottom bracket needs lower. And even if it meant spending a hundred pounds pushing the price tag up, it needs some kind of like bolt through rear end, even if it goes to 142, maybe not to the latest like 148 standard, but it just needs a little bit more security on the rear. Yeah. Cool. So um, to there's potential there for that bike. There then. is potential. And the other thing is we need to keep some perspective here. Like that sounds really critical, but this bike's a thousand pounds. You know what I mean? Like. Like it's, I mean, that's one of the reasons, I th this is a really good example of why we kind of cap our hardtail of the year test at a thousand pounds, because you can build an amazing hardtail for a thousand pounds, like unbelievable. But once you start to add suspension, everything gets more complex. And this like fair dues to Voodoo, it's, when I'm riding it, the suspension's still working, this riding position's funky, um, it's isolating me better from the bumps on a hardtail, but it just, when, when the other bikes are so good in this category, um, three or four years ago, this bike wouldn't have got a six. Mm. Yeah. But now it, ha it, you know, the competition's so high. Yeah. Well, that'll move us neatly onto the next yeah. model. Yeah, totally. So Vitus is another brand we're very familiar with. This is a new bike for them for this year, isn't it? And um, I mean, it looks a million dollars already. Yeah, totally. I mean, they dominate entry level hardtails, like, like no other brand, yeah? So it's really cool to see them bring out a, an affordable entry level suspension bike. And this is the entry level model in the range, in the Mythic range. So there's three bikes, start at 1250 for this one, top out at 1600 pounds. So they're actually quite tightly spaced. Um, and like what's really stand out about this bike is the frame quality. It was the only bike in test to have a 148 by 12 mil rear end on it. 
Yeah. So that's the latest hub standard that's pretty much universal on all bikes. So if you want to upgrade the wheels later on, you can slot a different set of wheels in, super easy. It's got 130 mil travel in the rear and it's matched to 130 up front. Um, the sizing's really progressive on it. The geometry is really progressive on it. The frame finish is really good on it. And really their model, I think, is slightly different to caliber is that there's a little bit more investment in the frame and that's not to take anything away from the boss nut, but just when you have them side by side, you can see the finish on this bike's just that like one notch above. Definitely. Yeah. So has that meant that there was some compromises elsewhere then? Or? Um, yes, they definitely struck a compromise, but maybe not like some, obvi some obvious ones. They put really expensive tires on it. Right. So they had Schwalbe, like top end Schwalbe tires on it, like which were amazing, like a soft compound front, like a medium compound rear, really good tires on the bike and um, with the, the snakeskin sidewall. And I'm yeah. like, whoa, like these come on like 3000 pound bikes. Um, so that was strange. That was a strange one because they also put a 10 speed drivetrain on, right. a Shimano 10 speed drivetrain. So your gear range is a little bit more limited on the rear than you do with the SRAM Eagle equipped bikes. Um, so, and I'm not sure what the drive, I'm not sure what the thought process is behind that, but I just think on an entry level bike, um, Maybe it would be better to have the gear range and cheaper tires and then be able to, like it's much cheaper to upgrade your tires at a later date. Yeah, and often you only need to do the front anyway, don't exactly, you? Exactly, exactly. So um, what about on the trails? How did it ride? It's a really solid bike. Like you can push hard on this bike. The, the sizing spot on, it's not quite as slack at the front, at the head angle as the caliber, but like the length's good in the frame, the proportions are really nice on it. It's really balanced front to rear in terms of your weight, your weight on the tires. Um, so you can really charge on it and it's solid. Like that's the key thing. So this bike is got a dedicated one by frame design. So it's got a wider pivot stance um, just above the bottom bracket. So you really feel that when you're like coming down into like, into shoots, into berms, into like fast corners and stuff, the bike's just really reactive. Um, a departure from the other bikes, though, is that it doesn't have RockShox suspension. Yeah. X-Fusion, front and rear, like we said before, 130 mil front, 130 mil rear. The fork's got like compression damping, it's air sprung. It's got all of the same adjustments that you get on the RockShox fork. Um, and the fork feels really smooth. Um, I'd overcharge it a little bit on air just to get the support I wanted out of the front. And, but it was the rear that I was less impressed with. Um, there's just a bit of a, the rebound's a little bit slow and there's a little bit too much resistance in the bike to get it moving. Um, so it lacks that kind of pitter patter traction that you get with maybe the RockShox equipped boss nut. Um, and what's interesting is that I actually did a first ride on the 29er version of this bike, but the top end bike, and it comes with a basic RockShox shock. And one of the things that really impressed me about that bike was the rear suspension. So it's really a case of it's, they've kind of got this super high quality frame and i just think maybe the x fusion shock stops you getting the most out of it and it's not to say it still pedals really well you can still ride it really hard it's just that when you swap between this bike and the boss nut you just feel that extra sensitivity and that extra traction so it's just holding it back a little bit just a it? little bit yeah. just a little bit i mean so so if, you, if you've got the budget and can stretch to it, you'd say the, the 1,600 pound version yeah. of this with the 27 and a half wheels yeah. is the one to go for. And it's really critical that you go for the 27 and a half wheel version because the bike that I tested, what, that I did the first ride on was the 29er um, and the BB was too high. Mm. Right. So it had yeah. really good suspension, good sizing, but the bottom bracket was too high. Right. Um, so Whereas that's not the case on this no, one. No, and it's so. not. And the middle bike in the range has the same shock as this one. Okay. So you want to buy, yeah. if you're going to spend extra money, don't just spend a little bit, spend a little bit more and go straight to the top end bike in the range. And the small wheel size. Yep. So uh, top of the tree this year is the Caliber Boss Nut. And, every, um, every year. <laughs> every year and it's it's really impressive to see how this bike yeah. has evolved into the latest model yeah it's incredible first time i rode the original bus i was blown away it was just such a like game change is a cliche but it was game changing because no one had really sat down these these thousand pound bikes were an afterthought mm. just to fill space in the showroom and like someone actually well mike sanderson sat down and went okay well why can't we have a really good bike and and came up with the bus nut and it was it was just unbelievable 
And it, and it just brings the thrill of mountain biking to such a wider audience. Yeah, totally. It? I mean, I wish when I started mountain biking that there was a bike like that available for a thousand pound because because I'd be riding it and I'd be like, oh my God, I can do absolutely everything I want to do on the bike as an experienced rider. This thing's amazing. Mm. So, so what's, what are a few of the things that um, they've improved and changed for this, this latest model? So the key things with the latest model is, well, it's got a new front end. It's got a new rear end too, but like the front end's like the most obvious bit. The old bike was a little bit boxy, a little bit square. Um, kind of functional rather than stylish. Um, the new bike's got hydroform tubing, it's got the swoopy down tube. Um, they've also made it slacker. They've made the bottom bracket height lower and they've made the bike longer. So okay. they've improved the geometry and the sizing. So fundamentally, it's quite a different prospect then. It is, but the ethos is still the same. It's still got all its character. It's still, it's a really fun bike to ride. It's got, and in fact, it's carried over a lot of the component parts that made the old bike so good. Um, so you've still got the RockShox fork, you have the WTB tires that come as standard and they actually added the soft compound front tire this year just for that extra cornering grip. Um, they did some of the branded stuff like the bar and like just put their own bar on, which is a great profile. Um, yeah, I think one of the big changes is that it went to a 142 bolt through rear end. So they, yep. they, cause it's, it's I'm like on the Voodoo, it's not such a big deal, maybe that it's got a quick release rear end because the geometry is not really allowing you to charge hard, but this bike always allows you to charge hard. So you need that back wheel bolted in. Yeah, so they've been kind of ticking off all the tiny little details yep. that uh, yeah. just, yeah, just take it to the next level. Yeah, really, and the suspension they? feels better than before too. Um, the pivot height came up a little bit, so that increases the pedaling efficiency and that also allowed them to run a lighter shock tune. So like the bike feels more dynamic, more lively. I mean, it's like, I'll be straight up with you. When I did the first ride on this bike before I tested it, I shot the photos for it straight after riding like a, a top end Trek and a top end Specialized. And we basically, I put them back in the van. I took this out. It was the last bike I shot for the day. And I was just like, we were pedaling along the road and I was like, nothing's changed. The riding position just felt like a totally modern high end bike. Riding the trails, I could do everything I wanted again. I'm like, it's, I just, they del they've delivered every year and like this bike is the best version yet yeah. by far. And I mean, so the price went from 1,000 to 1,100, but that extra 100 pound, it's, it's worth every penny. Yeah, I mean, you get a, so much yeah. more than that, than that yeah. cost you, doesn't? Totally. I mean, and the other thing that really made a difference for me with this bike, um, so I did, a little, I did a little experiment when I was testing them just to mix things up. Um, well, actually I was forced to do it because I couldn't put the seats down on the other two bikes because I hadn't chopped the seat post mm. down enough. So I rode all the bikes with the saddle up yep. and then basically did the same loops again with the saddle down. Cause I see a lot of like novice riders riding with their seats too high. Um, and this was the only bike where I could actually put the seat post down on. So I think that's yep. like, I mean, it sounds like a really trivial thing, um, but if your budget stretched to a thousand pounds or 1100 pounds, go on that extra bit further to buy a, spend 150 pounds on a dropper post just might not be available mm. to you right now so yeah. being able to actually slam your seat post in the frame is really critical yeah so one issue we should probably mention is that um the caliber's parent company go outdoors they went into administration like yeah. a few weeks ago we don't know exactly what the situation is now at this this precise moment in time and how it will be when you're watching this video but that will be something that you'll have to consider if you're looking at this bike as, as well as availability, isn't it? I mean, it? availability is actually a yeah. real problem. Yeah. This bike, um, I mean, it's not just our review that say it's mm. amazing. Like people have figured it out pretty much for themselves too, yeah. that this is the bike to get. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and they're hard to get. Yeah. So what I think you can do is sign up to be on the mailing list and they'll let you know when stock comes in. Uh, but you've got to be quick on the draw. Yeah, and there's no reason not to. I mean, if you're sitting there thinking, uh, should I, shouldn't I, just yes, say yeah. If, if, if one becomes available, buy it. Mm. There's yeah. no reason not to buy this bike. Yeah. So there you have the winning bike, the Caliber Boss Nut. If you want to find out all of the details, if you want to check out the geometry and read more in depth about these three bikes, then go and visit the website. Everything's on there, mbr.co.uk.